Contestants always make it a point to start with great enthusiasm and an even greater concept for their dishes. But sometimes, the execution doesn't come out quite as they planned. This is the worst opening night in the history of House Kitchen. Get out! Just like what happened in this dinner service, which had earned the reputation for being one of the worst in the show's recent history. Now, this was one of those services when most of the contestants had made so many grave mistakes that Ramsay only had one thing to ask. Was that a wedding or was that a funeral tonight? And the only thing missing was a eulogy for their taste buds. Yep, this is season 21. But this was a wedding service, and a very special one at that, since it was for season 20 winner Trenton and his fiance, Macy. Both teams had to impress the head table, and the guys were up first. When the first order came in, there was a bit of a tiff between Abe and Billy. You see, it was Billy's job to sear the scallops, but Abe kind of took over, and Billy wasn't thrilled about it. But let Abe do his thing to get the guys off to a strong start. But was it though? Well, take a look at this and you can be the judge. Just touch from the middle. It's nice cold. Come on, guys. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh, the scallops were colder than the bride's feet. Ramsey naturally asked Billy why he wasn't cooking his dish, and well, that didn't sit well with Billy, who felt like Abe was cramping his style. He's like, no, no, you never worked fish yet. What the f are you talking about? I've worked fish my whole life. About 40 minutes into the service, Billy thought he had the timing on the scallops down. I mean, he just couldn't mess it up this time. It was a big night. But this is what happened. It's wrong! Sorry, Chef. This is ridiculous! At this point, I'm not sure if Chef Trenton and Macy were loving the romantic vibe. You see, the fish station was dragging the blue team down, and the men were clearly frustrated. Everything got messier when Ramsay saw Billy's overcooked redo and decided to put both Billy and Cheyenne in the hot seat. Why are they black? Can you show him how to sew this color now, yes, please? Yes. Now, it's his dish. The service was spiraling out of control, and Ramsay asked Cheyenne to take over the cooking for the scallops, which was a bit embarrassing for Billy because, you know, he thought he knew how to cook scallops. But thanks to Cheyenne's skills, the first order from the blue kitchen finally went out. As for the entrees, the woman started communicating better, but Ramsay noticed a bit of an issue. Stop for two seconds, stop. Can anyone tell me what's wrong with this? Way too many collard greens. Ramsay ordered them to add the secret ingredient they were all missing. Now, this one was a game changer. Wondering what it could have possibly been? Uh, check this out. And I asked you to cook for some love, yes? Yes, yes, chef. Come on, it's like a roadside cafe, this. Guys? No. Love. All you have to do is cook it with love. Uh, if only it were that simple. Anyway, when the ladies sent up their entrees, Ramsay cut into the chicken. And guess what? It's rare inside. Yes, in chef. sickness and health, they won't even last a week married. Ah, it was raw. Much to the shock of nobody. Daphne was wondering why Mindy wasn't helping out Summer and was sort of letting Summer take the blame, but thankfully the refire got the green light from Ramsay. Now, it had been a solid hour and a half into service, and Ramsay decided to gather both teams to get those main table orders ready. But there was a catch. Perfect. How long? Six minutes. Six minutes. Let's go. Six minutes. Talk about pressure. Alyssa was all about making sure Trenton and Macy were happy, but Ramsay noticed something was off. Again. Why aren't there any colored greens on? Yeah. How's that possible? Yeah, I got it yet. I got it. I got it. I Alyssa hadn't even fired up her colored greens yet, and this made Cheyenne feel like Alyssa wasn't really in the game. Um, yeah, the feeling was mutual from the viewer side too, at least for me. Over in the blue kitchen, Brett knew how crucial nailing the main table was, but somehow he managed to serve up an ice cold steak. Oops. On the second try, Abe was feeling the heat, hoping they could bounce back. But the chicken turned out raw, and that was the last straw for Ramsay. He booted the guys out of the kitchen. You, 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 you. Get out! And would you look at Ramsay? He was so dumb with the drama. The f was that? Embarrassing, chef. Unacceptable, chef. A disgrace! You should be embarrassed. We are, chef. I am, chef. On the other hand, the red team wasn't that behind in the race. They were working hard on their part of the head table, determined not to mess it up. 
But then, Mindy walked up with a cold steak, and they had to shove it right back in the oven. And to make matters worse, Ramsey discovered some more raw chicken. Safe to say, he was pretty frustrated, especially considering Alyssa's collard greens mishap, Summer's chicken struggles, and Mindy's cold steaks. Oh my good gosh. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry. I can't believe that it was someone's wedding, and they were serving stuff like this. And when they tried again, the chicken passed, but the steak ended up overcooked. Ramsey had enough, and kicked the women out of the kitchen too. With both teams out of the kitchen, the sous chefs had to step in and save the day, cooking up those main table orders. Luckily, the reception managed to end on a high note as Trenton and Macy got to enjoy their cake. One of their vows must have been to never renew their vows in Hell's Kitchen, which reminds me of the service during sous chef Andy's wedding. Ramsey was in real emotional pain after what he was put through that day. Jackie and Joe fucked up their respective risottos, Danny didn't know how to properly sear scallops, leading to Ramsey himself needing to take over. Hassan sent up raw pink chicken not once but twice, and Chad, the one with prior experience in Michelin star restaurants, well, his salmon was undercooked, his scallops overcooked. I couldn't even look Andy in the eyes. I was that fucking embarrassed. Ah. <sighs> Which wedding service do you think was worse? Let me know in the comments below. But I'm done with weddings, so let's head over to season 9, where the American Classics Challenge turned into chaos. Wolfgang Puck only gave a thumbs up to 3 out of the 10 dishes, and even for those, he wasn't exactly throwing compliments around left and right. The one exception was Natalie's salmon salad, but two chefs really stood out, but not for good reason. First up, is Tommy. He presented a Japanese soy caramel burger, and right from the first glance, it left a lot to be desired. The visual appeal was utterly lacking. His burger looked like a lifeless wasteland. You know, show me your hand. Look how colorful that looks. That's how I like my burgers to look too. See, I'm not crazy, right? Right? Well, it was ugly, no matter how you slice it. And the taste was pretty mad. Instead of delivering that wow factor like the challenge demanded, Tommy's burger fell flat. And the other chef was Jonathan. Now, at least this dude was self-aware because he was not confident. Like, he was hesitant to even bring it up. I'm not taking it up. Come on, guys. I'm not taking it up. Pick it up, bro. For God's sake, come on. And yeah, he was right. Disclaimer. No Italians were harmed during the making of Jonathan's flatbread pizza. At least, that's what he thought it was. Where did you see a, a pizza like this? I, I haven't, chef, honestly. Nowhere. Not even my dog would have it. I mean, give me my pepperoni, mushroom, and extra cheese, man. Not that gourmet shit. I mean, if you go to Italy, they arrest you for that. You know that. But here's where it gets even more absurd. When Jonathan tried to defend his creation, he argued that he had zero say in the creative process. But Tommy wasn't having any of it, and believed that it could have been properly cooked. I'm standing here looking like an ass because um, I had no say so in the pizza. Basically, I just rolled the dough out. There was no redemption in sight. Ramsey sent it back, refusing to let Wolfgang Puck even taste it. I don't know. If it were me, I wouldn't have even let him see it. Up next, Royce's shitty lobster dish comes to mind. He was pretty confident about it. After he whipped up what he thought would be a fantastic lobster dish, he took a little taste. I feel great. I'm confident in myself, and I know the judges are going to like my dish. Royce was the last one from the blue team to have his dish judged, and he was going head-to-head -head with Christina. He'd gone all out, making a whole poached lobster infused with saffron and thyme. Disaster struck when Douglas Keane, with a look of disgust, discovered a long hair in Royce's dish. That's gross. It's not curly, so I'm pretty happy about that. I don't even want to know which part of his body it came from. But I'll tell you one thing, it's disgusting. You can only imagine the collective cringe in the room, and Clemenza didn't hold back and asked the million dollar question. You gotta be kidding me, man. You give a chef who has two Michelin stars a plate with a piece of hair on it. Ramsey grilled Royce about that rogue hair in the dish, and he claimed to have absolutely no clue how it got there. It's bigger than Roshni. 
But wait, there's more. Michael Chimarusti discovered that the lobster still had something on. You know, there's a part of the lobster too that you should always remove. The shit sack. Come on, man. In the end, Royce's dish earned him a less than stellar three stars, and I even think that was generous. Yep, that hair and the unexpected lobster surprise didn't do him any favors. Uh, moving on, we have Paulie's dish from the ingredient crossword challenge in season 16. He decided to go for something more on the technical side and came up with a dish featuring crab stuffed okra. He was the first one from the blue team to present this creation to the judges. But oh boy, it did not go well. Ramsey took one look at the plate and Paulie immediately came under fire for that okra of his being improperly prepared and Raw. Okra, badly prepared, uh, raw, puree slimy. The puree didn't do him any favors either with how slimy it was. And when he took a bite of the ribeye, oh man. And that's the worst bastardization of a ribeye I've seen uh, this year. Paulie only managed to score one point, and needless to say, he was pretty ticked off. He wasn't used to being at the bottom of the pack but Ramsey wasn't happy with him pouting and made sure to give him a stern warning. So if it asks, you give me raw f***ing okra and expect me to kiss your ass, absolutely you. not. I'm dreaming, let's get that right. And then, Polly walked straight into it again. When Ramsey asked if there was anything, absolutely anything redeeming about the dish, this is what he said. Yeah, the plate, you served it on, no f*** off. Ouch. Was that the best he could come up with? Anyway, Danny, the winner of Hell's Kitchen season five, had a bit of a rocky start. His dish of choice was mahi mahi with grilled bananas, but oh boy, it didn't go as planned. Ramsey didn't hold back, and he didn't mince his words either. He took one look at Danny's dish and quipped that Danny must have gone completely bananas while making it. Yeah, word for word, hear it for yourselves. It looks like you've gone slightly bananas. Danny had a hunch that Ramsey was trying to get a rise out of him, with him calling it hideous. When Ramsey asked him where the idea for this dish came from, Danny shot back. I just pulled it out of my ass, sir. Put it back in there, because it sucks. As for me, I would have no problem tasting Danny's dish, but I can't say the same for this next one. Who's this? Uh, JP's. That would be JP's. In the signature dish challenge, he was quick to the draw and finished cooking a whole 20 minutes before the clock ran out. When Ramsey got wind of this, he wasn't impressed. Even though JP tried to assure Ramsey that he could keep the dish warm, Ramsey wasn't buying it. He warned JP that by the time it was served, it would probably be overcooked, so JP reluctantly decided to start over. He was the second contestant from the blue team to have his dish judged, facing off against Sade. Before even taking a bite, he questioned JP about whether he had indeed cooked a whole new dish after finishing the first one so early. JP admitted that he had indeed started from scratch. With that revelation in mind, JP presented a Boston baked haddock with fingerling potatoes, haricot vert, and lemon beurre blanc sauce. Unfortunately, Ramsey wasn't in a forgiving mood. <laughs> Potatoes are solid. The fish, dry. The potatoes, hard. And the lemon component was something straight out of the 1970s. I'm ready to win. Yeah, sorry, buddy. I'm struggling whether to let you come to Hell's Kitchen or just send you home. Ramsey didn't stop there. He reminded JP that he was the only chef who had to cook his dish twice, a clear mark against him. And then Ramsey dropped a bombshell suggesting he might just send JP home on the spot. And in the end, he scored a meager one out of five for his dish. Now, Ramsey doesn't care about your experience, and in season seven, he went to great lengths to prove it. So this woman bravely revealed that she had never worked in a restaurant before and had been a stay-at-home mom. Ramsey called her down to present her dish, which happened to be veal scallopini with spinach. Now, Ramsey, known for his no-nonsense approach, couldn't help but comment on the dish's appearance. Oh, 
apart from it looking like baby vomit, what is that? But then came the taste test, and Ramsay surprised everyone by declaring that it was actually delicious. Ramsay, in a rare moment of warmth, told her not to be so jittery, but she couldn't help but admit that she found him a bit scary. Moments later, Ramsay leaned in and took it up a notch, turning up the heat in Hell's Kitchen by shocking absolutely everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, that was his wife Tana. But you get his point, right? When Salvatore, with 20 years of experience, presented his bucatini alla matriciana, he proved Ramsey's point. Experience doesn't matter. Bucatina matriciana? You made the bucatini. You... I didn't make chef. He was genuinely upset that an Italian chef couldn't be bothered to make his own pasta. I mean, don't serve Ramsay pre-made food. And definitely don't serve Ramsay undercooked pre-made food like our buddy Salvatore did here. As if that wasn't enough, he ended up losing the round to Maria. For good reason. While Salvatore was humble about it, this next chef was the opposite. She was ready, pitchforks and all, to defend her pre-made crap sauce. I don't think there's anything wrong with canned sauce. You're not gonna be making your sauce from scratch all the time. Monique in season 14 was the final contestant from the red team to have her dish evaluated by Ramsay, and she faced off against Brett. She proudly presented Moe's Pasta. However, things took a sudden nosedive when Ramsay asked her a crucial question about her dish, how she made the marinara sauce. Monique's response was far from what Ramsay had hoped for. She admitted that she used sauce from a jar, which led to an instant and dramatic reaction from Ramsay. Naturally, he spat out his bite in utter disbelief, but Monique wasn't convinced. No, if you wanted it, you should've just told me. I would've did it. You came oh, to the kitchen. I've gotta tell you what I want. Yes. Gosh, the audacity. Monique's attempt to justify her choice didn't sit well with anyone not even her fellow contestants. She argued that Ramsay should have explicitly told her not to use pre-made sauce, which only managed to annoy everyone around even further. Monique's dish earned her a mere one point, a clear sign that taking shortcuts in the kitchen, especially in a competition like this, doesn't lead to success. Now, in season 18, during the Creative Desserts Challenge, Trev was feeling pretty confident about his healthy dessert creation. He was convinced that it would be a hit. I've made this dessert a bunch of times. Everybody loves it. Hey, let's go up there and give her a kiss. Avocado kisses. Yeah, that's what he named the dish. Now, despite his confidence, the feedback he received was far from what he expected. Valerie brutally criticized the dish, describing it as a mishmash of everything she despised about combining healthy eating with desserts. But don't let my softball version fool you. The judge was way harsher. Listen to this. This is everything that I dislike about healthful eating getting integrated with dessert. You can tell that Ramsay was trying not to laugh when Chef Valerie was ripping Trev a new one. Poor Trev. You can't deny that he got hit real hard there. This is like one of my nightmares where I think that I make something amazing, they just tear it to shreds and tell me I'm fucking horrible at my job. Oh, and Chef Valerie wasn't done yet. It tastes like a bush. <laughs> I want to forget this. Gotta be one of the funniest insults by a guest judge. She really hated the dish, huh? So these were some of the worst, most unappetizing dishes served on the show. What would you add to the list? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. And if you thought this video was crazy, then don't forget to check out my next post right here. It's even better.